Hello, Tim. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. Tim, this is a radiant canvas. This and is then, right at the beginning, isn't it? It's great to see yeah. the process. It's got a beautiful background of, of sort of washy gold paint. And it gives the painting a bit of a visual shimmer. Even when it's finished, bits of the gold come through. And I'm just starting to fill it up with imagery. I do the backgrounds with my hands. It's like having 10 paintbrushes. It's amazing what happens. That your mind can put images in using your hands. I've got the orange and um, red and sort of grey background to kind of extend the flames outward. It's, it's like dawn, you know, it's like sunlight breaking over the horizon. So do you have any idea when you start on a painting what it's going to look like in the end? I do. Um, Sometimes I might even dream a painting. I remember you told me once when we chatted a few weeks ago that sometimes you hear a voice telling you what to do. More than sometimes. Wow. Always. Okay. When I'm painting, especially when I'm painting fast, for example, doing a background, I hear blue, red, yellow, 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 gold. Right. And I tend to follow that. And yeah. I, th I think it's like an inner voice. So the artist with whom you've collaborated on a number of works for this exhibition is an LA-based artist called uh, Daniel Boganovich. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about meeting him. Daniel wanted to paint, to paint Buddhist imagery because of the challenge to him oh. in a technical sense. He saw Karma Funsok doing it from a religious basis and from a cultural basis because he was himself Tibetan. So Daniel started doing it too, I think he realised what I'd already realised, that it's an incredibly fruitful area to work in because yes. of the painting traditions. To be riding on a snake is actually a very rare image. Okay, That's the only it. one I've ever seen. Mularoo and a kangaroo. Oh, yeah. what's, okay. what's going on here? That's me putting something in that yeah. comes from my experience. Trying to reference something local mm -hmm. that, was, that I figured was important and in a sense could be connected to the Tibetan Buddhist idea, the landscape being sacred. What's mm. this work called? Uh, I've just called it Vajrakilaya. What I'm really drawn to about this painting is the fabulous dotting technique, which is, you know, a through line in your work. Just tell me a little bit about the dotting technique, which was something sure, you originally yeah. learnt and were given permission to use by some of the senior artists. Yep, yep, during my visits there, they encouraged me to do dots. They said, why don't you try it? You've really taken that technique and run with it, and you've done mm. a number of things with it. Yeah. So, you know, in, in this uh, painting, for example, the dotting is very decorative. It's you know, multi-layered picture. You use the dotting technique in a, in a variety of ways, don't you? I mean, in some paintings, you're using it more like pointillism, like the neo-impressionists, like Seurat and Sinha. Mm, yeah. Oh. I, sometimes I'm using the dot itself to create the image. Sometimes I'm using the dots to erase part of the image. The more you do it, the easier it gets. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I love about it is it really lends your canvas as a, a constellation-like quality. You really get this feeling that you're looking at a heavenly body. You are very much drawn to Eastern and particularly Buddhist and Tibetan Buddhist iconography and traditions. Did you go searching for it actively or did it find you? Uh, I went searching for it mm. at a time in my life when I needed it. How long was it before Buddhist iconography, Buddhist images and motifs began to appear in your, in your work? They came into my work almost straight away. Always have painted about what I'm doing. Yeah. And yeah. I was started going to teachings and so I started painting about the tradition. Yeah. And I also found that there was like a doorway into a visual art tradition. Was it a gradual process to approach picture making in, in, in a slightly more topographical bird's eye kind yeah, of sense. Yeah, it was a natural thing to do after visiting Papanya. Mm. And, and, and the sitting on the ground was connected to Buddhism as well because there's a lot of meditating people connected to the earth. Mm. And uh, some of the older artists at Papanya told me that the dreaming 
this is a guy called Old Mick. He said the dreaming's everywhere. He comes up through the ground, he comes up through the buildings, it's in the air, it's in life itself, mm. even in the city. And then there's the idea that it's a map. Yeah. You know, you're actually looking down on the landscape. Yeah. And so you, you treat the canvas as the landscape and you're looking down on the uh, landscape of the painting that you're mm. then going to put a narrative into. Mm. So here we have got Dorothy Legper and all this other image. We've got a UFO and I've got a temple from an anime movie and a, and I've got a guitar that's green. And who was that played by? Because Blair Billy had a green guitar. I've also noticed that you've got a couple of blues figures down here which I've seen you use in other paintings. It's Lion Gary Davis. It's one of my favourite photos of a blues musician. Do you listen to a lot of music when you're painting, Tim? I do. It actually energises you. The rhythm, especially uh, helps when you're doing dots. It all inspires me. Yeah. And, and I think music is just something you can use when you're painting to make yourself feel a bit stronger. 